views and opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of BronxNet or the program underwriters. Hello and welcome to Open 2.0 and I'm your host Alyssa Colon. Today we are joined by the Civilian Complaint Review Board Youth Advisory Council. We will learn more about the CCRB and how youth can voice their concerns and get involved. Thank you guys for joining us today. So I want to start um, off by asking your guys' name and your titles. My name is uh, Yohara Alvarez. I'm the Director of Outreach and Intergovernmental Affairs at the CCRB. My name is Nisar Ahmed. I'm a Youth Advisory Council at the CCRB. Uh, my name is Shania Moses, and I'm also a Youth uh, YAC member, a Youth Advisory Council at the CCRB. Um, I'm Thomas Rose, and I'm another uh, YAC member of the CCRB. Um, who is the CCRB? I'll take that. Um, the CCRB, or Civilian Complaint Review Board, is a group of everyday New Yorkers, civil civilians, who are tasked um, with the responsibility of taking in um, reports of police misconduct and investigating them. Um, they're an independent city agency, um, and they are an affiliate with the NYPD. Nice. Um, who is the Youth Advisor Council of the CCRB? I'll take that one. Um, so the CCRB YAC is a representation of the CCRB. We, our job is to help civilians, more the youth, understand that if they do encounter a misconduct with the um, with the NYPD, that they have a place to go to, which is the CCRB. Uh, mm -hmm. The CCRB is filled with youth of all different um, um, ages, all different races. And uh, our job is to make sure that the youth feel safe. Um, as of fall in 2018, my class is the second class of youth advisory, um, of, youth, of the youth advisory um, members to be at the CCRB. Okay, nice. Um, and for the next question, um, uh, what are the mission and goals of the youth? I'll take that one. Our mission is to bring awareness to young people on like the police misconduct that are happening. And CCRB provides like a platform for young people to actually talk about the police misconduct that has happened to them and not be shunned away because it does happen a lot. So. Okay. And um, what are the resources that you guys um, offer? Um, we offer awareness, and that's the most important um, resource of them all. Um, we let uh, the public know that they have an outlet to report um, any police misconduct that they may face. Um, and so we make sure that young people know their rights um, when dealing with the police, and they know how to file a complaint and what the process is like. Okay, I think this is really amazing what you guys are doing, especially with everything going on right now with the Black Lives Matter movement. I feel like this is an amazing thing. So, you know, the youth could go somewhere and they could feel safe and know what to do in like the proper order and like what actions to take. So that's amazing what you guys are doing with this. Um, now for the next question, um, how has the Youth Advisor Council and the CCRB been affected during this pandemic? Uh, I'll take this question. Um, since since this pandemic has happened and with everything going on, the CCRB has gotten over 700 complaints of police misconduct, and they have been happy to investigate them all. Um, I think, like like um, my like my colleague Thomas said, 
they're an independent city agency. So mm -hmm. they, they, their job is to make sure that if, if someone does encounter a, a misconduct with the police, that they do everything they can to help that person. They're for the civilians. So uh, I, they're doing everything they can to, you know, try to help everybody through this, through this situation that we're going through. Okay, thank you. Um, and for the following question, um, how has the Youth Advisor Council and the CCRB been affected and or motivated during the revolution and current social um, unrest? Um, so I feel like when our commercial came out, our PSA came out, it came out in the best time possible because it like happened right before all these protests were about to start and stuff and like George Floyd. And I feel like it just brought like, it just shine light on how much, how much big of a problem this is and how it really happens so often and that there needs to be a stop to it. So I feel like CCRB, we're like the, we're like the people that you could actually come to and talk to about it and have people help you with dealing with police misconduct. Nice. Um, and how would youth uh, file a complaint with the CCRB? I'll take that. Um, if you want to file a complaint, um, you can call their direct line, which is 1-800-341-CCRB um, or 2272. Or you can go through 311 and file it. Additionally, you can file a complaint online um, at the CCRB's website. You can, Google, you can find it by Googling CCRB NYC, and it's the first two links. All right, thank you for that. Um, do you guys um, see any patterns in the complaints? Take that one. <laughs> so um, what's so incredible and important about folks filing a complaint is that we have a team of policy. Uh, our policy department is dedicated to, you know, tracking these complaints to figuring out, you know, um, what's the demographic of the complainants. So like, What's their age? What's their background? Where um, do they live? Where do these incidents take place? Um, and what we're seeing overwhelm overwhelmingly in these patterns of police interactions um, that weren't, uh, where people feel to be misconduct, it's the majority of our complaints are coming from uh, the Bronx and from Brooklyn. So mm -hmm. on our website, um, uh, if you Google uh, CCRB um, complaint activity map, you can hover over the precinct that you live in to see what types of complaints are in that specific area. Um, if there, if people want a little bit more information about, you know, um, the demographic of the police officers that have allegations against them, or um, what types of incidences uh, we're seeing in these interactions, that's also on our website um, in the Data Transparency Initiative uh, part of, of the website. Okay, and I'm just curious, so. You said the age group is around like what, uh, 14 to 24 that they could go to the CCRB, correct? So um, regardless of age, we, um, we, anyone can file a complaint. So um, if it's 16 or over, we would need, 16 and under, we would need some kind of like parental or um, mm -hmm. uh, guardian approval. But um, everyone can file a complaint regardless of citizenship status. We don't even ask for that information. So it's really important for everyone to know, but especially to know that it's a resource for them. All right, thank you. That's, that's amazing to know that. Um, and my next question is, um, what are youth reports? So yeah, I'll take that one too. So um, Alyssa, you brought up a great question on, you know, what are some patterns and trends in these complaints? Because we received these complaints, we were able to um, write a youth report. So our policy team compiled this information and um, got to paint a picture of what types of complaints uh, we were receiving from youth, what the age of the youth were, and what they were doing. Um, mm -hmm. The year before, in 2019, we had a youth summit, which was dope. We had 250 youth come out, and policy team was able to get some real life stories on what you know, their experiences were with policing. And, you know, those are the stories that don't get captured in the data, but it's important to know about. And again, mm -hmm. important for us to, um, you know, spread the word and file the complaints. But in the youth report, some of the major findings is, Alyssa, like you, like you mentioned, um, you know, of youth 18 and under, majority of those complaints were filed by the adult. So the mm -hmm. youth weren't themselves coming forward and, and giving us these complaints. So 
again, it's important for youth to know about um, what's going on there. It's also um, really that the majority of youth complainants, 18 and under, were males of color. So about like 64%, like two thirds of the youth that were filing these complaints against police misconduct, alleging police misconduct were youth of color. Um, yeah. And the police, that the youth that were being stopped, they were stopped for like normal things that youth do. So like playing in the playground, running, high-fiving, um, having backpacks on, jaywalking, mm -hmm. which I feel like everyone is living in New York can be guilty of, right? Yeah. Um, one last point is that we found that plainclothes officers, I know that there was like a conversation about like, you know, kind of undercover plainclothes officers being um, diverted. But when we were doing the, the policy was writing the report, uh, we found that plainclothes officers were a large portion of the officer unidentified cases. So what that means is that people had these interactions are like, is this even a police officer, right? Mm -hmm. So with the NYPD shifting gears on the um, plainclothes unit, we'll see if that um, influences or changes um, that interaction. Um, and last but not least, uh, the recommendations that policy was able to make, the NYPD adopted those recommendations. So that includes um, strengthening uh, their requirement to notify a parent or guardian when a minor arrives at a precinct, um, and then requiring that you know NYPD gets better training when when uh, interacting with youth. Yeah, I think that's really important that police need to get training and interacting with youth because, like you said, they could just be simply like playing or giving a half a high five or just going to like the nearest bodega and like they get stopped for no reason. And then I feel like the youth they don't know what to say or do because they're just so like I didn't do anything. Like what do you what's going on? And it's, I think this is really important what you guys are doing. That's honestly amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. Um, you guys recently um, partnered with Never Whispered Justice on a project. Can you tell us more about that? Um, okay, I I'll talk about this one. So we recently just did a PSA about, you know, police misconduct and all that stuff. And the process, the way we did it, it was really, it was an amazing experience. It, it was like we were actually creating, we actually created a script. We first had to learn about what a PSA was, and then we, 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 we went into individual groups and we created our own PSAs. And we took information from that and we put up on a board to see, okay, everybody has like a common um, uh, line, I guess, of what they think a PSA is and what they think is should be in our PSA. So then we had this guy named John Thomas from the program come in and he helped us create the script. And then there was one meeting that we all had where we just re we revised the script, we edited it, where we went, we didn't want to be in it, we took it out. And then now we get to the filming part. So we we went to this um this uh filming um uh, I'm sorry. Um I'm losing my words. We went to go film. We went to go film it in different parts of. We went to a park. We went to a barber shop. We um. We did a an, a filming in a in a in a photography building. We had like a photo shoot where we talked about what the CCRB is and how we can help, and it was just an amazing experience. It was um. We had a lot of fun, but it was also the, the sense of that we were doing something important. We were doing something that would hopefully make a change. And, you know, with the pandemic and everything that was happening, like my, my, my friend said, Nusra said, it came out at such a great time, you know? The, if you, you, you just have to see the PSA to, <laughs> to believe it. It's, yeah. uh, you want to make sure that when, after we did this, we want to make sure that something that people will actually look at it and you know see that we're, we're all in this together really we want to make sure that what we did was not done in vain that it it can make a change that it, we made it for a purpose you know think hopefully things will get better and that that's just really what it is you know um ccrb has so many great things that they do for civilians you know people people do often tend to associate the ccrb with nypd and we're 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 for the public really if you have a complaint you know come to us and we'll help you in any way possible and i think that's what 
the the YAC is about too, you know, youth, some youth are afraid to speak out against what what they're going through and what's happened to them because of the the consequences or what the aftermath, what can happen after, you know, we want to give them, like my friend said, a platform to be able to speak up for themselves, empower, you know, they have the power to make a change for themselves, you know, they can do it. All you have to do is call. That's it. Thank you. And actually, we um, have the PSA and we're going to play it now for the viewers at home so they can watch it. It's supposed to be like any normal day. My friends and I just finished playing basketball and we're heading home. We didn't realize there was an officer behind us. And when we saw him, we pulled to the side to let him pass. And he got out of his car. He shoved us against the fence and asked us questions like, who are you? What are you doing? And I didn't know what to do. I just told him we were playing basketball and I was heading home, but he didn't believe me. He ended up putting us in handcuffs, put us in the car, and took us to the precinct. My mom told me to call the CCRB. I called them, filed a complaint against the officer, and they turned my complaint into an investigation. Police misconduct affects us all, and my family experienced it firsthand. My name is Emerald Garner, the daughter of the late Eric Garner, and the CCRB was there for both me and my family. The agency launched an independent investigation, prosecuted the officer, and ultimately, he was fired. The CCRB is an important resource for all New Yorkers, especially young people. If you encounter police misconduct, call the CCRB. Every New Yorker has a right to be treated with respect during an encounter with the NYPD. If you feel like that right has been violated at any time or any place, report it to the CCRB. And we're working to get this message out to young people. Police misconduct affects all of us. And we want you to know that the CCRB is here for you. The agency investigates police misconduct by the NYPD, so call them and report. And we still have a long way to go in improving police interactions with young people. But the city is committed to involving us in the conversation and making sure young people are a part of the solution. We are members of the Youth Advisory Council and the CCRB. Now for my next question, um, how can youth get involved with the Youth Advisor Council of CCRB? Um, the applications for the third class of the YIC come out um, this fall. Um, you can uh, submit an application at the website uh, nyc.gov slash CCRB Youth Council, um, or you can uh, email outreach at ccrb.nyc.gov uh, for any questions. All right, thank you. If youth or families wanted to get in contact with the Youth Advisor Council of the CCRB, how can we do that? Um, it's, uh, if you want to apply for the um, Youth Advisor Council, uh, you can go to the site uh, of the CCRB and apply there. Um, but you can reach out, you can email outreach at ccrb.nyc.gov um, to contact them. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And I just oh, yeah. want to add to, um, they can follow uh, uh, the CCRB on Instagram. So it's at CCRB underscore NYC and also on Twitter, uh, CCRB underscore NYC, uh, YouTube, same, CCRB mm -hmm. NYC, and then also Facebook. All right, thank you guys so much. And now for the last question, um, do you have any advice or tips for youth during this time, during a pandemic and the social um, unrest? Uh, I'll start off. 
Um, so with the pandemic, I know like my parents, they're very strict on not letting me go outside at all. I've been stuck in here for like five months, but mm -hmm. still, I still have access to internet. So like with the internet and especially TikTok, I've been seeing like a lot of awareness on the Black Lives Matter. I've been seeing a lot of ways I can reach out, like sign the petitions. And those have, that's what I've been doing mostly. I've been signing petitions, I've been sharing, I've been letting people know about it. So there's like more awareness to it. And like more people could like see about this, like know about this. And like, they're not like ignorant. And um, for the pandemic, I feel like everybody just needs to like, yes, like fight for Black Lives Matter, of course, but you know, also stay safe, like respect others, have your mask on, have hand sanitizer, just like be aware of, cause we're it's still a very big pandemic and people are still dying, but you know, we just have to respect others. And just like, if, if you have COVID, like isolate yourself and just like stay away until you can actually do so. Yeah, thank you. Um, does anybody else want to share any last minute words or anything like that of that nature? Um, okay, so as regarding the pandemic part of it, like my friend said, stay safe, stay inside, keep your mask on. It's not over. I know everybody wishes it was, but it's mm -hmm. not. You know, use your hand sanitizer, wash your hands as soon as you get in the house. I know, you know, I know my mom, she, she, I can't touch anything, can't even go near her without washing my hands. Yeah. So, it's it's important it, I'm, I'm pretty sure it helps thank you so much for that yes thank you <laughs> so thank you guys so much for joining us on this episode of open 2.0 and thank you guys for informing us on the ccrb and where the youth could go and who to talk to when they're in a situation like that and just thank you all so much for coming and giving us this information and i feel that it's amazing that you guys you guys are so young and coming together and doing something for your community and for you know, kids your age and my age, and I just think it's amazing. So thank you guys so, so, so much for coming on this episode of Open 2.0. Thank you for having us. Thanks for having us. Thank you guys. Thank you.